vita. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Geraldine Bisset Joseph. The Proud, the program for the regulation of unplanned developments, was set up with the aim of rationalizing land occupation in existing squatter settlements and to transfer land titles to the established occupants. This has proven to be no easy task. However, the unit um, continues to in its endeavor to get the job done and to tell us a little bit about the proud and also the challenges that they face as well as the accomplishments that they've actually triumphed within. I am actually joined today by the proud coordinator who is Mr. Cuthbert McDermott and Mr. Ovid Mata who is the project manager at Civil Works. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Okay. Now, very <laughs> briefly there in my introduction, I, I just gave a very general description of what the Proud actually is. But can you give us more of a detailed, um, you know, a detailed insight into what the Proud is for anybody out there who's unaware? Okay. Um, the Proud, as the name says, a program for the regularization of unplanned developments, mm -hmm. um, was an initiative um, implemented by the government of St. Lucia, primarily to take care of those persons who have occupied lands and they don't have title to it. Mm -hmm. um, they may have inadequate access, um, inadequate infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, and they don't, as, as I indicated, don't have title to the property. So the, in 1999, thereabout, the government of St. Lucia decided that, wait a minute, we have a lot of persons with a significant investment in a residential structure, mm -hmm. but they don't have title to it. Mm -hmm. um, so the program was initiated. Um, what we do, um, and we do it specifically with lands owned by the Crown, mm -hmm. um, we go in, we put in the necessary infrastructure, mm -hmm. we subdivide the property and we then transfer title to the persons in occupation. Okay, all right. Yeah. Are there many people, because maybe this is something that people are not aware of, are there many people who are actually living in that situation where are they quote unquote kind of squatter developments around the island? Mm -hmm. Quite a few. Okay. Um, the last count, they, they had 54 communities mm. who were squatting. That's the last count, and that was only on Crown property. We're oh, wow. not talking about those on private property. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay. And um, in saying that, can you g give us a, why do you think, give us some insight into why you think um, we got into the situation where it is so pre prevalent that, that squatting <laughs> takes place? Well, interestingly, um, it, it has a multifaceted there are several reasons for it. Mm -hmm. One of them being simply where we came from. Okay. Um, we have to recognize that we are an agrarian environment. Mm -hmm. um, persons worked on a plantation. Mm -hmm. We were allowed to occupy the peripheries of that plantation. Right. So you have a lot of communities that came out of that environment. Mm -hmm. We were close to the farm. We lived in that area. Mm -hmm. Generations after built next to um, family members and it continued. Um, some instances are a result of um, persons have just identifying a parcel of land and go in there and actually occupy that spot mm -hmm. and won't do it, then there's a continuation and a mushrooming of that community. Okay. So um, the response, well, not the response, another aspect is that mm -hmm. it's in response to housing, it's okay. in response to the need for shelter. Mm -hmm. Persons need a roof over their head, mm -hmm. they cannot maybe afford what is available on the market, and as such, they provide housing for themselves. Okay, all right. Um, so let me ask you, in, in the, the latter years, do you think that it's actually become, because you, you, you actually took us back in time there and gave <laughs> us a little history, but do you think that the situation has become worse or better as, as we have progressed? I think to a certain extent, um, certain elements have actually made it a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to say that the cost of housing or inflation has actually made it uh, brought housing a little away from those persons who may very well be in a position that they cannot make that income to earn um, to build that home for themselves. Okay. Rental housing is expensive and um, 
to a certain extent, um, even persons coming out from the rural communities into an urban environment and mm -hmm. needing a place to stay, and there isn't the response to that influx of persons, mm -hmm. you would find those persons trying to create housing on the peripheries of that urban environment. Okay, all right. But we also need to point out that those unplanned developments are not only on state-owned lands. Eh? Mm -hmm. You have the situation where it happens on private properties, right. where situations where you call family land, and persons, again, I was brought up in this area, just mm -hmm. put up a house right next to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. And this now, because it's a lot of unplanned communities as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Can you give us some insight into what, um, uh, we talked about different areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. You said there's many areas around um, St. Lucia that actually we see a lot mm -hmm. of squatting taking place. Can you tell us what were other areas that you might see this most of all? Okay, um, on the peripheries, you mm -hmm. look at areas like for our show on Conway. Mm -hmm. um, in the countryside, we look at, well, in the urban, in the suburban, suburbs, suburbs uh, okay. suburban environment mm -hmm. or the rural environments, you mm -hmm. have person, places like um, um, Piai, mm -hmm. um, in in Piai is in Labri, yes, or is it in yes. Sozel at this time. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, Piai mm -hmm. Labri. Mm -hmm. We have Larissa's V Fort. We have Contonment. We have Palm. Okay. We have several places places dispersed all through the island, mm -hmm. even in Babono. Mm -hmm. And those are actually pretty large communities. Eh? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah. That's to say that um, based on our interventions, mm -hmm. we have actually targeted in excess of 1,800 households thus far. Wow. Right? Okay. And if you look at what the, stat um, the stats office put out on, mm -hmm. a, on an average household size of 2.3, mm -hmm. you can imagine mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. extent of just what we have mm -hmm. dealt with thus far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I have to say that I have actually had the privilege of being able to get some insight into Proud, whereas mm -hmm. I've <coughs> attended a few meetings and such like. Right. And what, um, one of the things that actually surprised me, I should say, is that not everybody's actually from the same socioeconomic background who, is, who are actually being you know, talked to in regards to, to that as well. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Because everybody would, might just think it's only people from, um, I don't know, in a certain kind of bracket that because might bracket, be in that right. situation. But that's not the case either, though, No, not, not again. Uh, and if I go back to uh -huh. um, the genesis of some of them, you have to recognize that um, some of our parents were able to work hard on the mm -hmm. farms, put us through school, go yeah. through schools, but yet still we come and we occupy right next to them. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are persons who are very well off okay. and they still live in that sort of environment because mm -hmm. it is generally acceptable. Okay, okay. All right. Very good. Now, when we, uh, we're going to go for a commercial break in a minute. Okay. But before we go, I just want to say when we come back, I want to um, talk to you a little bit about um, how it is determined which are the crown lands and such likes because I know there are sometimes when the proud actually goes in and there might be a dispute and such likes. Mm -hmm. So we'll just like to talk about that when we come back from the break, okay? Yes. We'll be back in a moment. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should the reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm joined today by representatives from Proud. Now, gentlemen, before we went to the commercial break, I was saying to you, I would like to um, talk a bit about the disputes when people might, the, how do you determine, in other words, that um, the land that people are on are crown lands and such like, and so when disputes happen, what, what is the process that actually takes place? Okay, um, for us, um the land title in Act in St. Lucia is, um, is quite clear. Mm -hmm. um, any land that is owned by anybody needs to be registered. It needs to be registered at the Land Registry Department. Mm -hmm. There is a register sign. On that register, you would see the survey plan information. If the property is surveyed, mm -hmm. you would see the, the titling information, whether it is Crown, Crown um, and Claim, or Private Parcel. And it also gives you details as to what the ownership 
history of that parcel is. Um, that is kept at the Land Registry Department, and anybody who is interested or wants to find out information can actually go there and get information about the parcel of land. Right, so al along that line, so once there's a dispute, all we do, we call for a copy of the register. If the register identifies that parcel of Crown property, mm -hmm. then we can actually go into that area. However, we don't go into all of the areas, okay. right? All areas that are deemed fine crowd, mm -hmm. we would not go into that. Okay. Um, crowd is, proud is guided by cabinet conclusion. We mm -hmm. have a mandate, mm -hmm. right? So the cabinet ministers would decide that proud needs to enter into, for an example, contournment. Mm -hmm. Where in contournment, we go to registers, we define our area, we get that land. If it is in the possession of other sister agencies like the National Development Corporation or the St. Lucia National Housing Corporation, mm -hmm. we would actually do a divestment, bring it into the Crown. Mm -hmm. Bring it across to the Crown, then we actually go in and we would be in a position to uh, deal with any complaints. Okay. Our first point of complaint investigation, all our complaints are registered and logged. So we have a number assigned to it. That is assigned to an officer. An investigation is done, and then we do the follow-ups. Okay, all right. And I, I know, uh, Mr. Mata, you were to um, um, touch on as well, why people actually gravitate to unplanned developments. Why would you say that actually happens? Well. In speaking with our beneficiaries, she's the person that we actually attend to in our um, developments. Um, some persons have pointed out that a lot of the times they really think that it is just bush as they push it, that okay. the land is not owned by anybody. Mm -hmm. But I like to reiterate, like Mr. McNamara said, that every mm -hmm. piece of land in St. Lucia is owned by somebody. Mm -hmm. If it's not privately owned, it is state owned. Mm -hmm. But every piece of land is owned and there's nothing called bush that you could just go and conquer, okay. as we like to say. Okay. All the times people have pointed out that the approval process is very lengthy or very expensive mm -hmm. and they find that it's in their best interest to just go and develop and plant. Mm -hmm. But the consequences of that far outweigh whatever benefits that the persons may think that they, they have at the time. Okay, okay. So they have pointed out several reasons for unplanned settlements, mm -hmm. but then none of them are actually justify doing those developments. Okay, okay. Now let's talk about, now, now that we, we has, we've actually determined how, how, you know, it is brought about that people know which land is, uh, is mm -hmm. crown land and such likes, when the proud steps in now, what is the process that actually takes place? Because, I mean, you mentioned before about um, making sure that the, the land is divided properly. I know that things are actually put in place, utilities and such likes, right? That and drainage correct. and that stuff. Give us some details about that because I don't want people to think it's just a case of just dividing the land and saying who owns what. It's not just a case of that. There's a lot that of is correct. groundwork as well. Tell me a little bit about that. That is correct. Um, for, as indicated, once the cabinet ministers have identified an area for our intervention, mm -hmm. our first point of access or our first activity is actually mm -hmm. collate as much information as possible mm -hmm. on that community. Mm -hmm. So we go to the land registry, do the desk research, pull whatever files that we have mm -hmm. by sister agencies, get an understanding of what is there. Right. Um, once we have done that, then we actually go in, we speak to the persons, let the persons know that this community has been identified for prize intervention. Mm -hmm. We will be coming in and we will be doing um, following particular steps. Right. Um, once we've done that, then we would go in, we'll do a socio, we'd pick up every single person that is in there. Mm -hmm. We would send in and do an occupational. Mm -hmm. um, that here seeks to see how the persons have occupied the space, mm -hmm. right? Where mm -hmm. there are um, ravines, drains, whatever have you. Right. Once that is done, um, we would go through the process of preparing a rationalization plan. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of persons believe that proud do not have to go through the DCE process, mm -hmm. but that is untrue. Mm -hmm. I'll let Mr. Matter speak more on that a little <laughs> okay. later, but mm -hmm. we go through the very same processes mm -hmm. that a normal developer will have to go through. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so once we prepare the rationalization plan, then we get the detailed plans prepared also through mm -hmm. engineering assistance. Um, once that is done, we put in the necessary infrastructure, whether okay. that be roads, accesses, um, water infrastructure where it needs upgrading, mm -hmm. um, electricity infrastructure if it's the upgrading, and then mm -hmm. our end all, uh, the end goal is to ensure that the persons who are there mm -hmm. have title to the property. Okay. All right. Okay. So then we facilitate them actually having title to the land they occupy. Okay. Brilliant. Right? Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'll let Mr. Matter go into Please the Please do because I, I know you you actually mentioned DCA. Tell us a little bit about 
the okay. DCA and everything else. Right. So even before we get to the DCA, like okay. Mr. Magdam had said, um, it started for a number of surveys. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the, um, the occupational survey, mm -hmm. where we go and see what structures, what um, infrastructure is in the community. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned the um, socioeconomic surveys, where mm -hmm. we deal with the people and find out um, the employment and the family size, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But then we also have um, land surveys that we have to conduct. So then we'll get the boundary surveys, we'll get the topographical surveys. Mm -hmm. um, we, all of that information is used to prepare the rationalization plan, like okay. we mentioned. Okay. In our cases, since our developments are so extensive, because like I mentioned earlier, they're pretty large communities. Mm -hmm. We don't normally just go out for um, engineering designs one time. Mm -hmm. We usually start with operating principle, or we prepare a plan and we consult with not only the community mem members but our sister agencies, so mm -hmm. um, Department of Infrastructure, Environmental Health, the DCA, mm -hmm. um, Social Transformation. We consult everybody okay. back and forth, including the district reps. Yeah. When we finalize our layout, we actually have to get approval from the DCA mm -hmm. for our master plan. Okay, now before, hold it right mm -hmm. there. Before we get into what your master plan is and the DCA, we're just okay. going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. no we'll be no back problem. in a moment. <clears throat> okay. I am a child. I am HIV positive. I am a Muslim. I'm a journalist. I am gay. I am a political activist. I am differently abled. I am Chinese. And me, I'm a little plus size. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance of individuality and differences within all of us. A message brought to you by the Department of Health and Wellness. You are watching Issues and Answers, and I'm joined by representatives from The Proud. Now, before we went to the break, Mr. Matter, you were telling me a little bit about the DCA? Yes. So we stopped on um, the master plan. Right. The master plan in and of itself is a process. Mm -hmm. Now, to get your approval in principle, which is what the master plan is, mm -hmm. you have to consult with the other agencies. Right. And they ensure that our development, our proposals, meet all um, best practices in engineering as well as planning um, guidelines. Mm -hmm. They ensure that our lot configurations are okay, our densities, our road sizes and connections. We have to confer with the um, fire department to ensure mm -hmm. that there is adequate access for emergency equipment. After we've done all of that and we've gotten the feedback from the agencies, the sanitary department and whatnot, mm -hmm and they're satisfied that our layout is okay, our zoning, all of that is on point, mm -hmm. then now we have to go and get our engineering designs done. Mm -hmm. That's when it becomes very interesting for okay. me because <laughs> my background is, is, is engineering. Okay. So that's when we go back to the survey in information that we have gotten at the mm -hmm. beginning where we get the topographical surveys, the occupational surveys, and then we fine tune our designs now, actually doing our drainage calculations, mm -hmm. our road designs, mm -hmm. and then now when we've designed our construction plans, we have to go back to the DCA to get approval, okay. like every other agency, as Mr. McLean pointed out, or every other private person. Mm -hmm. And then the process continues. It has to be, they have to consult the um, health department, they have to consult Ministry of Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And yes, finally, we get our full approval where we can actually go and start surveys and um, subdividing the land. Okay. But this is only the end of the rationalization process. Right, yeah. Regularization does not end there. Because okay. like Mr. McLean had pointed out earlier on, we actually are about transferring title to residents. Yeah, so it's not right. just about going and building roads, drains, putting in lights. Mm -hmm. That is just the first part of it. Mm -hmm. The socioeconomic information we got in the beginning helps us when we're actually doing the second phase, which is the um, transfer of title. Okay, all right, brilliant, okay. Now you, you mentioned the large, um, well, a few agencies that you work with, right? Yes. But I know you actually work with a large number of agencies. Mm -hmm. Just, just, can you just touch on a couple more and then just tell us exactly how they help bring about the mandate, you know, help you to bring about the mandate of, of 
Yes, um, as indicated, the, the, the PROUD is a social program, mm -hmm. and for that reason, we recognize that there are social maladies associated right. with each of our communities. Mm -hmm. So in as much as possible, we don't want to just focus on just the infrastructure or right. just the transfer. Mm -hmm. We need to see how best we can bring persons or empower persons. Right. So certain elements is bringing on those sister agencies which ca who can assist us mm -hmm. in empowering persons. So mm -hmm. for example, a National Skills Development Center is one of those key agencies. Right. And the whole drive for bringing them on board is that mm -hmm. Where we can see that there's deficiency in skills, mm -hmm. maybe we can assist by providing persons with a training opportunity. Okay. Um, we brought on um, the St. Lucia Police, mm -hmm. um, Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The reason being that um, community policing is an element that can go go far away to mm -hmm. assist persons in empowering them. Right. All right? Um, we have some of our communities that may not see the value of it, mm -hmm. but interacting with the police allow, allows the police to better know you yeah. and being, being in that position, mm -hmm. it's, it's easy. It's a, call, a phone call away. Mm -hmm. um, we've brought in St. Lucia Manage Waste Management Authority. Mm -hmm. They again, they assist us in waste disposal. They can identify those areas where we have dual leg vehicles, where we have poor waste disposal, poor mm -hmm. sanitation. Mm -hmm. We can get that addressed. Right. Um, the Ministry of Infrastructure. Ministry of Infrastructure, mm -hmm. where there are things that are a little beyond our um, means to handle, we can actually get infrastructure to get involved in that area. So right. for example, um, in areas like Bexo, mm -hmm. where you have some of the streams or waterways clogged, mm -hmm. infrastructure is responsible for distilting and declaring, so, so we can actually get those persons mm -hmm. on board there. Mm -hmm. we are, uh, Mr. Mata has just in, um, reminded me of the St. Lucia Development Bank. Okay. The point of the St. Lucia Development Bank is where persons may not see um, the means for actually gaining title, mm -hmm. the bank is brought on board to actually provide them with opportunities. Right, right. Um, okay, so we also um, have other agencies who have similar mandates as us. So mm -hmm. we actually try to look for synergies with those agencies like, uh, or programs like the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Program or okay. Constituency Development Program. Mm -hmm. So we actually work alongside with those agencies and programs mm -hmm. to implement our own mandate. Right. And I know for a fact that you also have a lot of site <coughs> visits and even community meetings. Which are, and how, how, how important do you find that these site visits and community meetings are in meeting your mandate as well? Well, key to it all is that there needs to be that constant dialogue with the community, that mm -hmm. constant communication. Mm -hmm. I think that some of our community members are a bit frustrated that they have not seen work on ground right. and they're, they're the concern that we're having too much consultation with them. Mm -hmm. But it is better to have a little too much consultation with them than not enough consultation that later on they're, they're dissatisfied with what is given to them. It, yeah. there's, there's that need for striking that balance. Mm -hmm. So we, we have constant dialogue with our community at every single phase stage mm -hmm. of the process we bring it back to the community we tell them why mm -hmm. we, we get the feedback from them and we try to ensure that they're very well aware of everything that is going on under the broad okay brilliant now again mm -hmm. we just i just touched on the community meetings and such like and i know there's always a, mm -hmm. a, a, a something sent out to tell people to come along and, and attend the, the meeting especially when it's in their communities because right. it's very important pe for people to do so but if there's anybody watching this how would you tell them to actually get in touch with the proud right now if they just wanted to drop you guys a line and such like oh um well they could actually visit us at our main office. Mm -hmm. Our main office is now um, at the Conway Business Center, that is the Cashier's Car Park mm -hmm. on the seventh floor. Mm -hmm. They can telephone in. Um, they can telephone in at 468-2600. Mm -hmm. um, they can also um, send Facebook. us... Well, we just, we're just in the process of launching a Facebook page. Okay, so man. hopefully they can actually send us a message on our Facebook page also. Mm -hmm. um, we we once had a uh, a site office in 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 viewfort mm -hmm. unfortunately we we it's no longer functional mm -hmm. but we're hoping to actually bring a site office to viewfort that mm -hmm. those persons in the south can actually get in touch with us okay all okay. right another thing that we're trying to encourage is um community groups mm -hmm. so in the past we've not relied, but we partnered with some community leaders or officers, point person in the communities that mm -hmm. can interact with us on behalf of the communities. But we're trying to encourage the communities to make formal groups and then we can have that point of contact with them. 
Okay, yes, brilliant. Yes, okay, yes. well, we're going to be winding down in a, in a little while, but before we do, I just want to ask um, both of you, if you could comment on, what would you say to people, like, uh, if you were to give a call to action in regards to why they should come forward, contact the proud, or even if they've been contacted, to actually make sure that um, they actually do go ahead with the process and such like. Because I, I find that, again, in, I have had the privilege of, of working with the proud, and I find that um, even in talking to people, sometimes they don't realize how much it would benefit them to mm -hmm. actually make mm -hmm. sure they go mm -hmm. through the process. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to people for them to understand that this is something that is actually good for them to do? Okay. I'll let you have the last one, so I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to remind people, um, one of the reasons that it has taken the proud so long to actually implement the infrastructure is mm -hmm. every time that we come up with a, a rational design for the area, mm -hmm. when we're starting to get our approval, then we see something comes up. Yeah. We plan a road here and somebody yeah. has come to a house here. Or you plan mm -hmm. to put a drain there and somebody has come and did an, an extension to their dwelling. Those kind of things actually frustrate the process. Mm -hmm. So we're just hoping that it can be bear patience with us. It works in their benefit to wait until the process is complete before they do anything. Okay. Another thing is our sites are declared as special enforcement areas, mm -hmm. meaning that no type of development is supposed to go on without DC approval. So once you go and get a DC approval, it would not disrupt the rest of the process in the, um, rationalization. Okay, brilliant. <coughs> Sorry, well, I, I'm begging your indulgence by just allowing me to give one explanation because mm -hmm. I think that um, a lot of our communities speak of proud and once they use the term proud, mm -hmm. it's synonymous with all crown lands. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Okay. Um, there, are, there are different agencies that are responsible for doing work on lands that belong to the crown. Mm -hmm. I may name the few, like the St. Lucia National Housing Corporation, mm -hmm. the Invest St. Lucia or NSD, National Development Corporation, mm -hmm. NDC, mm -hmm. it was formerly known as. These agencies also work on Crown, mm -hmm. um, Crown property. Additionally, Crown themselves work on Crown property. Mm -hmm. The property that we targeted are guided by cabinet conclusion. Mm -hmm. So for example, as I indicated earlier, the cabinet ministers go into the community of um, Bexo, mm -hmm. and we go there. And consequently, we are not responsible for all of Crown property. Mm -hmm. We are responsible for selected areas. Okay. Um, that being explained, so you can actually go to the Commission of Crown Lands where you're interested in lands that are not under the jurisdiction of um, the Proud mm -hmm. unit. Um, that said, I think um, it is important, like Mr. Mata noted, is to recognize that the whole point of actually ensuring that persons build to quota, build in areas that are suitable is to ensure that in the future that investment that you have made is not subject to um, a hazardous event. Okay. Right? Okay. So I, want, I would like to extend all persons to recognize that there's a purpose, there's a reason to ensure that you're not exposed to hazard events. Well, thank you so much. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thank you for welcome. joining me, Mr. Mata and Mr. McDermott. Hopefully thank you can you. come back another time and we can have a, mm -hmm. another discussion because it's been a wonderful experience. Definitely. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for watching Issues and Answers from all of us here. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>